I'm still I'm going to drive to Samson to David Rogers because it's in the Denver system. So he's asked me to talk about everybody's community program to the best of my ability. Uh, Roger, as you know, is from really Swiss grass and not here for a good 30 years. And he's done a marvelous job in taking those old native varieties and improving us to much higher standards today. So we are in the process of scaling up production of Swiss grass seed in Ontario and Quebec. And it's for market all over North America. We now have markets in the United States and in France. Um, the main use for Swiss grass seed in our world right now is here in Heaven. It's gone over big time in the United States and in France. Uh, if you're not familiar with what here in Heaven that is, it's going to take a plot of land, it could be five acres, it could be 20 acres, it could be 100. Create a haven for the deer to plant together. We've got food plots out in the center of the field, something for deer like to eat, and the switch grass goes up all around that because they get very comfortable in the switch grass. It's tall, it's so you can see them, and they tend to live there. They have to get down in the switch grass. Is that the way you keep them safe? Yeah, you keep them safe. Until a certain time period. <laughs> Always the purpose behind everything, right? So, Rogers, we're doing switch grass and also on big blue stem. That's a new one that's coming along with. And uh, we'll try to do a plant news race here because Roger has now achieved plant news race on three of the Rogers in the United States and in Europe. So in 2024, we will have the 800 acres in the seed production here in Missouri and in Quebec. Uh, what you're looking at here is on the left is Roger's plot combine working in Quebec in the field of Big Rock. And the lovely wife here on the other side. And you can see it or not, it's hard to see, but at the top of that stake, it's just a nice eight foot stake. The top of that stage, you got a hand on one stock over against that stage, and the seed head has seeded the top of that stage. So, that was in our own farm last year at home. That crop is a fourth year our seed big rock. We hope in 2025 to sell enough switch grass seed in North America and in the Tender Europe to cover over 30,000 acres. We say she has to sell. Currently, this year, we have around 15,000 acres for the sold in the United States and Europe. So it is growing quickly. We almost doubled our production every year for the last three years. So he has found his mark in terms of creating varieties that people are really interested in. So this is his list of varieties that he's created. RC Big Rock being the latest big uh, variety of this maturity and absolutely the most popular variety. Uh, it's about to sell eight to one to the other varieties in the United States. RC Chippewa is another new one that's come on the market. It's now out there for three years. RC Sundance is really new. It's just got released in Canada this year. Uh, RC Tecumseh. Uh, it's been around a bit longer, almost as long as Big Rock. It's a much earlier variety. And then there's RC Blue Jacket, which is very neat. And just in the breeder stakes, there's that. Right to the map in there, I think, to, to show you where, where we're growing it and where a lot of it is growing, because we sell mostly through the Midwest states from Pennsylvania out to the Dakotas. The longer day varieties, of course, are going to be sold in the greener part of that map. And the shorter day varieties, like uh, the Kumsi, would be further west in the drier land, like the Dakota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Nebraska. 
And the reason for that is the constant is a very drug uh, hard like it was created from an old writer called Summer. And uh, it's from the Western Prairies provinces, and it's at least more pollen to, to that type of different violence. Ours is bigger up, on the other hand, is created from the old right Paven Rock. Comes from central Illinois to a little place in central Illinois called Paven Rock. That's where it was first developed and, and named for up that town. I say that. Uh, a couple of things in this planet that uh, are getting past the best body day. And we got one of them, and we came right with the other one. Uh, so here's. So, so this, is, this is one of the Rogers plots. So you can probably see the little stakes. There's a little red stake in front of every row there. So what he does is he builds these varieties in the greenhouse. In pots, or in pots, you put three or four varieties, you know, a few of seeds of a variety in a pot, and you pick the best plant as you can for that plant. He does that after you know, several cycles, and then he takes it into the field and you plant a row, see there, one row of variety, and let us see how it performs in real time and, and how it compares to other varieties beside. And you'll notice too. When this particular photo is very upright, he's taking his plants that used to go out like this and then stand up straight. And this, it's really help, it's really helping. Um, we're the most in the past years in the United States now. These all start to leave these plots where we feel they don't cut them down, they don't go up not to next year. And what we're finding is the big lot is standing up right to the window. And be really impressed at how that happens and very good at the not basically gets flat. This is his newest project, which is Big Blue Cell. He's taking a variety and he's working on improving this. He's reached the 11 foot height mark right now. So he's pretty happy. I'm not sure. I, I don't have my data. I'm not. Not act, have access to what he's got on this uh, particular variety, but he's telling me that he thinks they will compete with the campus going forward in terms of volume material from the mafia. So, this is a picture, and you can't see that very well. This, this is how he does plant new rights, it's very intensive. He has to take a, a plot like that. Each one of those plants you see there was done by hand, transplanted out of the greenhouse into that field. And he has to collect a tremendous amount of data for several years in order to achieve plant reading points, get the data that the government requires to pass the writing. You see the sample on this side over here on the right. Well, it's Dave Rock, the shorter variety, and that's RC Big Rock. That photo was taken about years ago, actually. And the newest RC Big Rock is now in its fourth generation. I'll be planning RC Big Rock three this spring for the first time, and he has Big Rock four already on the way. So he's continually improving these varieties for height. Uh, we're taking the old Cater Rock, which used to produce you know, maybe a six to six and a half foot tall plant. And now it's eight and higher and, and much more sunlight thrown in, we'll call it. The leaves standing up better and catching more, more energy. This is a sample of this RC Big Rock uh, Plant Range Rate Certificate. And this is a sample on the right here of seed tag in our operation. We show you the level of germination. It's followed down to see 68%. 
When I first filed Cave and Rock in 2006, the germination was 32%. The rest of the city was going. This worked extremely hard in changing that to faster, or I shouldn't say faster, higher level of germination. We actually achieved on a couple of fields in Sunday this year germinations of 84 and 89% on the finish germinating. So it really has changed the, the, the whole level. Plus, the seed size is another thing. It's not about the seed size of Big Rock to be twice the size of the original seed, the original Big Rock. And then the uh, seeds per pound counts 175,000 seeds per pound. It used to be almost double that the Big Rock. This is the newest variety um, that's been released. This is grown in Eastern Ontario. Um, it's, a, it's an earlier variety, and its aim is to grow up with the dairy. It actually, this is Ron Toomey's, the actual is a dairy farm in Eastern Ontario. It's just grass for about seven years now, and he likes to cut it for animal feeds. He's using a dairy operation. He's very happy with it. Uh, with the sound we see that the bales here is actually up the back, a little further east than the line. Uh, that's Norm Perone. And that actually is a field of big rock that was big rock after the back of others. I'm just trying to create what we call a field crop. Of the switch grass, we have a little bit just you know, a biomass crop. We say you want to rotate this crop faster, like six, seven years, create clean fields with calf problems, and keep away from the diseases that build up over time, and, and turn it into a uh, production crop for the typical dairy people. Roger created. Uh, Two sites actually. He has a site from Lake Canada, which he's chief executive officer of. Um, he has Swiss grass for Avalon, which is a big hit with the beer people, and Swiss grass for Barnaby now, which we're in the dairy cellar. We're trying to convince the dairy farmers to grow it instead of wheat. We have a straw product for bedding, a straw product for feeding dry cows. And use it in trying a family ground product for mats in the three cell dairy lines together. Picture some of my pictures from home, picture of the combine cutting switch grass. You see, you see my, my dryers there. I have 14 dryers like that. The dryer crop. And so it's still somehow what? The heat's pregnant, so you have to get into the dryer immediately. You don't use heat, it's all natural air and drying. It's a dryer spray, uh, usually in about eight to ten days, depending on the weather. Time. So, two years ago, well, until she finally got this equipment, how it's going to take off. And we were working with another seed thing, but it was too small an operation, so I put the door up and spent a bunch of money to build a seed this time. So we now are in the second year of production. I've been expanding that line actually this year and putting in a lot of length range um, to increase my production. We're anticipating that uh, sales continue the way they are, it was probably double our production again. This can be going far. So we have to keep building more, more capacity to, to handle the problem. 